Hi there everybody, welcome to another video. On today's video I have this Mercedes A-Class. This is a 2007 and it's having an intermittent limp mode situation. Um, so when you're driving it goes into limp mode and if you switch it off and on again it sort of clears the limp mode for a little bit and then it goes back into limp mode. But at the moment, so I switched it off, switch it on again and there's nothing showing on the dash so i'm just checking here for fault codes so i think he's got a sort of a, a transmission issue going on um so i have lots of faults here but uh, i'm gonna check the main one here which is the transmission because i think that is the problem so the output signal component Yeah, so th this is a typical uh, transmission control module fault. Where all of these faults come out from the, from the module. And that is, um, that means really we have to remove control module and most likely send it for repair CVT so that's transmission related uh, that control unit DCM under voltage same there that ESP may come up because of the control module for the transmission. You can see there, there. <coughs> so most of these are going to be related to the transmission control module. But well, that's something to do with this alarm siren. The SAM here, that is the... Uh, fuse box so the main problem here would be first to fix the transmission issue um, and then see if any of these remain then we can tackle that but the main problem here is the transmission control module So, when the car is not running, I think you can delete all of these fault codes. Let's give that a go. Mission off. Mission on. Okay. So we have to see um, if I do a little test drive, see if this come back straight away or not. Okay, so before I remove the uh, transmission control module um, on this A-Class, I am going to, I'm just warming, warming up the engine a little bit, warming up the oil. Uh, in the transmission so it can flow out a little bit easier because obviously I'm gonna drain the oil before I remove the the module and uh, also um, if you put your car in neutral uh, you'll be able to push the car if you needed to move it while you wait for your transmission control module to come from the repair shop so that's the idea to remove the the module send it for repair um, there are companies that can do it out there um, ECU testing or AC tronics those companies can um, repair the transmission control module 
Um, so at the moment, for example, this is show not showing anything, but after around 20 minutes or so when you're driving and the transmission gets hot, um, well, the oil, um, the fault comes up, as, so it says transmission visit workshop. But every time you switch off the car, switch it back on, it resets. Uh, but it does, obviously, when the fault comes up, it goes into limp mode. You can only drive about 30 miles per hour. So it's a fairly common fault on this, the A class, the B class. Um, so anyway, I'm putting it in neutral myself because I'm gonna push the car out of the garage once I remove the TCM, because uh, I need to use the, the garage for other cars in, in the meantime. So anyway, I'm just waiting for the car to warm up a little bit. It was already a little bit warm, so you can see its temperature is at about, I don't know, 60, 65. So um, we'll let it warm up for a little while. All that might be enough, to be honest. I mean, because uh, we have to remove the, tr the oil pan anyway, so all the oil will come out right so i'm gonna get the car up now and uh, i'm gonna start the this transmission uh, removal but i also um i am going to disconnect the battery on the car for removing for disconnecting the tcm from its uh from the plug that is connected to so uh, just temporarily we can disconnect the battery uh, the only thing with you having the car in neutral is that uh, it'll be a little bit difficult to remove the key but uh, well you can't actually remove the key so again things to think about uh, but have to disconnect the battery here so if you plan ahead you can um, maybe just get the car somewhere where you don't need to move it or push it or whatnot and uh, that will help you you can just do the job with the transmission in P but I definitely have to push it so so I'm just going to move the negative terminal here which is definitely this one okay so obviously if you're going to do that make sure your radio doesn't need a code this radio doesn't need a code if you change your radio you might need a code just little tips there and also obviously you'll have to reset your clock and whatnot once you finish right so let's get this car up and rolling. So I'm just going to start by disconnecting the, the electrical connection up here. And you will notice there is a little red tab there. And inside that little red tab, there's a little pin, which we need to slide to one side uh, before you can actually push that pin back. So I'm going to give it a go here with this little tool so basically we want to slide that a little bit to the right and then push that back so that should allow you to push that little clip back And it's not going to come out, but it's just going to slide back. I think that's as much as it goes. Which is then going to allow you to... There is a, basically a little... We, can, we have to press on the side here and uh, this will all this cable would come out or sometimes i sometimes i put something like this on the side here and lift the little clip that holds this together 
So I'm just going to remove that and I'm going to show you the clip that I'm talking about. It's a bit hard to film because um, I can't have the camera up there. Okay, eventually I got it loose. It took me a little while. It's a pain in the neck, to be honest. Um, but basically, that's the little red tab there goes back, which then allows you to press this here. This bit here which then lifts in there. It lifts that little piece, if you can see. But it is quite hard. Even when you press it, it doesn't move that much. So it really struggles to release, release it from there. So the way I took it out in the end, to be honest, it's um, I got a little screwdriver like this one here and put it from this end into the hole there and uh, twisted it a little bit. So that little twisting there lifted that bit, which then allowed me to release that so with that battle out of the way we can concentrate on draining the transmission fluid from here so get an oil pan i'm gonna get an oil pan where i'm going to catch all the oil so i can measure it and refill the same amount and usually i get um the last time i did one of these i think i got five liters out so, like I said, I'm going to measure it um, so I know how much is coming out. Okay, so I have a 5 mil size Allen key here. And I'm going to release this drain plug. It can be hard sometimes, so... Right, so that came out. Um, I must admit, I did damage this once, not on this car, but on another one, because it wouldn't come out. So it did, it got, it went round in there. So I had to get a screwdriver and, or like a, well, yeah, like a screwdriver or a punch point and start hitting it on the side to loosen it. And while that is draining, I'm just going to loosen these bolts that hold the oil pan. They're not going to be tight. I think these are only tightened to like 8 newton meters or so. So they're going to be very easy to remove. Okay, so I won't be uh, releasing <laughs> any more bolts at the moment uh, because otherwise the oil is going to start coming out the sides and uh, I'm not ready for that because I want to put a, an other, another oil pan underneath here so I can catch the oil that's going to come out of here um, so I can have an accurate measurement of how much is coming out and how much is going back in. So I'm going to let that drain for a little while and then come back to it. There is another plug inside of this one, as far as I remember. Um, the overfill stick, basically a little stick that sticks in there, um, which we can also remove and drain some more oil. But to avoid the mess, we'll wait for that one to finish draining. Okay, so some of these have an overfill stick in there, but I can't seem to fill it on this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fit this back in there. And uh, I have my oil pan underneath to catch the oil, any oil that may come out of here. And uh, we'll see if there is one. Some transmissions, very rare, rare I haven't found one, but uh, 
anyway we'll see if there is one in there uh, maybe there isn't so I'll just take this out make sure you have an oil pan if you're gonna measure your oil as well and uh, we'll carefully remove these so we don't lose any oil on the floor So the oil pan may be a little bit stuck, so slowly you can just release it. Okay, I removed all the bolts now. Just a little bit stuck. I think we'll definitely want to change this gasket as well. Okay, there we are. So some oil coming out there. So, it will be a good idea to order a gasket and a new filter or strainer to replace. And, and now we need to remove the valve body here, um, which I think comes out with the, uh, together with the, with the TCU. So we need to start removing these bolts here. Okay, so I got a T40 Torx. Just gonna release all of these. We also need to release these ones here. These are T uh, thirty five, I think. Right, so I have a T thirty socket actually. Right, I'll just take the T forties out. one more Torx screw that I missed <laughs> so that doesn't help matters of course So it can be a little bit heavy, so just make sure you hold it properly. Okay, the valve body is out and uh, all this black section here, it's the, the transmission module. So 
So we're just tilting it because it's got some oil on it as well. Okay, so now I'm going to drain whatever oil is in here. I'm going to collect it on the pan and then I'm going to clean this. So give it a nice clean, clean the magnets here. You can see these magnets are full of stuff. They are not, they are, obviously they are little bits of metal stick to that, to them. You can't remove these magnets. You can just pick them out. They are removable and clean them. You can see the amount of bits that they have. So we want to make sure we clean them. You can see the magnet. I mean, pick it up there. So you can give it a good clean. So like I said, I'm going to collect this oil and clean this pan. Because also I'm going to put my transmission um, module on here, on top of this uh, in the meantime. Right, I got the pan nice and clean. Magnets are clean. Uh, actually, uh, I was going to put the the valve body on here to rest it, but um, I changed my mind. I will actually fit that oil pan back on here. And the reason for that is because I need to move this car out and uh, it's going to go where the wilderness is out there and I don't want anything making that area dirty. So I will put the cover back temporarily with the old... Uh, gasket or maybe maybe not but yeah I'll, I'll put the gasket and uh, so one thing to remember if you are watching the video entirely it's uh, when you refit the valve body with a new with a fixed computer which is here the fixed TCM so this here is the TCM um, this here it's the uh, the lever from the the lever from the uh, transmission so it's in neutral at the moment and uh, that will slide that slides in here so um, this here can move like this so occasionally you if this is moved like this and that pin up there is moved back or forth it, you you might fit it somewhere here which then you will not be able to move the shifter you will it will be stuck uh, and that would be a problem because if you finish your job and that is in the wrong place then um, you have to drain the oil and uh, remove everything again so you can get this in the correct position so that is a very important part to remember I will try and remember to mention it when I'm fitting this back um, but I just thought I'll do it now, just in case I forget. This little hook here, this U hook, has to line up. It has to go into that pin there, that little pin. So it goes in like so, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. It, it's not really uh, difficult, what I'm saying. It's just that little pin there fits in there if the pin is here you will be stuck you will not be able you might be able to move the transmission one way but not the other and also it's not going to be engaging in any gears because you're not actually moving this so we have you know we have p r n d and so on so this is an this is an important bit. So it doesn't matter what gear you're on, you could be on reverse as long as you fit it in the right, in the hook here. Now, um, I'm gonna get this into a box so I can keep it dust free and uh, I'm going to remove the TCM. Okay, I've got the TCM and uh, valve body in this box. And I released or I removed, I've undone all the torques that are around here. So I'm going to show you which ones. This one here is a T30 
just gonna put them on the side another t30 there another t30 there actually i might just leave them here actually um it's a good thing i'm recording because then i know where all these are going to go back there's another t30 just here that comes out with this little clamp so just keep it together another one here keep them together and then I, I remove this one three ones um, I undone this one as well so that one there This one here and this one here so the Sun is shining and this one that is right here a bit difficult to pick that one out right maybe we'll get it in a minute maybe with a bit of paper there nearly right okay got it out and then um, we need to just unplug these sort of these solenoids here so we've got one there just pull them out a little bit like so make sure their little o-rings are in place but you need to just release those we'll probably need to remove them so I'm just gonna take that one out take this one out so I would recommend you to take a picture of this so you know what goes where so obviously what I'm doing is I'm just putting the one that's on the left on the left and the one that's on the right on the right that kind of thing anyway I am filming so obviously I will know and we should technically be able to pick this up and this is somewhere in here something goes potty like a wire breaks or something uh, when the car is hot that wire maybe separates and then it, you have the problem but while that doesn't happen uh, the car runs okay okay and then we may want to clean this this is like a little magnet here as well it's a little bit dirty as well but anyway uh, the main issue here it's this so now this is gonna be, be sent off for repair uh, the rest here um, I may give it a clean a quick clean with some uh, some paper later on but uh, this can remain here I'm gonna cover it and uh, as far as that goes that is ready to go oh, one one important part here as well before I go it's uh, sometimes as it happened to me in the, in the previous transmission I, I was working on um, this here this little blue little like gasket here sort of came out it came out and it was on the side so that came out and it was on the side somewhere um, and I had to figure out where it goes <laughs> but eventually I did and um, and I think they just sit they sit underneath that bit there 
Another thing to be really careful with is these little like antennas here. You don't want to break them. So just be careful with that. And uh, now we need to pack this nicely. Maybe we need a box this size. Put some uh, protection around it and then uh, you need to contact the company and send it off. One of the companies normally doesn't allow you to send them off to them if you're not a trader, if you're not in the motor trade. I don't remember which one of the two companies, the AC Tronics or the uh, or the other one. Um, it's called um, ECU testing, one of the two. But um, one of them will allow you to send it and get it done. Uh, it could cost around uh, up to 300 pounds plus postage maybe. I don't remember. I'll have to do it now anyway. Um, so the other thing is while you're waiting you could put this cover back on. I only put two bolts so to keep it dust free um, and don't forget to order a new gasket, a new strainer and oil. Now this transmission so far I've drained almost three liters not like uh, the one in my B-Class, I had the same problem. Um, it was five liters, so slightly different there. Um, anyway, for now, uh, I have to send, now I have to send the TCM and then uh, wait for it to come back. Okay, so um, you may notice that if this is leaking a little bit of oil from here, uh, then you can put your a few extra bolts to keep it close but um, because we need to collect whatever oil uh, comes onto this while this is while we're waiting for our TCM uh, we are also need to account for this oil so um, we need to try and save whatever oil drips onto here but it could start leaking out of here as well if we don't close this little bit better so I'm just gonna put a, an extra few bolts in there make sure it's uh, not dripping because you can see it's dripped a little bit so I need to account for that when I it's not a lot obviously it's a few drops but a few drops here a few drops there a few a little bit of misting mist oil there so as I was saying any oil that gets wasted anywhere um, needs to be accounted for so in the end he could account to up to 10 mils not a lot but uh, 10 mils is 10 mils so anyway i'm gonna end this video now um i'm gonna post this video and i will do the second part once i get the tcm so the, that will cover the refitting of the tcm with the valve body putting oil in it and making sure there is no fault in the car anymore um, so the fault before was only showing up to about tw after 20 minutes of driving um, Like I said once the gearbox was hot and then it was going into limp mode um, So that's what we're trying to fix. Hopefully The part is repairable. Sometimes the parts are not repairable. So if the TCM is not repairable we might need to get a second-hand one and reprogram it into the car uh, or we might well have to get a new one but a new one can be quite costly so let's hope it's repairable and um, well for now thank you for watching hope this video helps and don't forget to subscribe okay so after a week or so um, I've got the the bit back here ready for installation um, you may notice it comes with this this is the bit they cut out and they repair whatever's in there and then they, they put their own cover back on but uh, this because obviously you, you have a warranty I think it's a lifetime warranty with this so uh, that's a good thing um, so this transmission this one it's the 7228 CVT So they found something wrong with it, they fixed it. Now we can 
refit it. So before refitting, just prepare yourself uh, a little bit. Um, obviously, I left my these little solenoids in the place where they belong. Um, I think these, the black ones, might be the same. So whether you have one here and one here, I'm not sure it matters. But uh, anyway, I I made sure I don't really mix them. So. Um, so prepare yourself before you fit your um, electronic electric part and we have the bolts here these bolts we're going to tie them to eight newton meters all of these um, so make sure uh, you haven't got any dirt around any bits and also make sure that little o-ring is in place as well so as i mentioned sometimes it comes out make sure it's in place and it doesn't come out and it hasn't come out um, also this bit here sometimes when you're moving this about this can come out but you need to make sure it's in the correct place and in in there basically with that bit in there um, so I did clean this bit but uh, clearly not Enough, maybe <laughs> anyway it's almost like this is a bit of a magnet and it's got some dirt around it just like in the oil pan it's got two magnets and they attract sort of metally bits <sighs> right once you're sure it's clean then get your um, um, TCM back on okay here we are that will fit on here. Don't want to drop it. Just put it in there nicely. Okay, now I'm gonna get my torque wrench and get all this torqued. And uh, also, one thing I wanted to show you here. I've got this kit from Febby Bilstein. The kit will have a strainer, so a new strainer and the new gasket and i have actually i took one of these out but i have four liters of oil and um after i measured the oil that i i took out of this actually i have four liters um so i guess um i think this might be a new sample bolt here Looks like it might be. Yep. Okay, so as you can see, I have all the kit. Um, four liters of oil for CVT. And uh, that was given by Febby. Got the gasket, strainer, and whatever it's in here. for this uh, transmission. That's the kit number there, 171769. So I got my torque wrench here set to eight Newton meters.
Okay, got them all torqued. Eight newton meters, as I said. Now we're ready to fit this back. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil around this o-ring here so it slides in nicely but then we have our other bolts to fit in to hold this in place okay so i have my bolts here that hold the the whole unit in place so these ones here are going to be eight newton meters the smaller ones here are going to be six newton meters so I think I have um, seven of these. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. And then we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these. So this use a smaller torque bit, and this is slightly bigger. Um, so again. 8 newton meters and these are 6 newton meters so make sure you uh, set your torque range properly this is a t40 i think these are t40s here yep and these are t30s so now we are ready to refit the whole tcm back into the car and these actually these also are um, we're going to tie them to eight newton meters these hold uh, the transmission oil pan in place so um, right I need to get the car in here <laughs> get it up and so we can refit all of this okay before I get the car up and refit all the TCM um, I'm just going to get to the uh, the filling hole from up here so we need to pull this out um, this literally pulls out but it's quite hard to pull it out because it's clipped on so you may want to open the sides here a little bit at least this side and then pull this out it literally just plugs in there one bit here another one here another one here but it is quite hard to get it out um, once you get this a little bit out of the way actually you can probably even pull out of, anyway I'll do that in a minute but you can see this here it's uh, the filling hole for the transmission or that's where the filler gauge technically goes but this doesn't have one and we need to break the clip this clip in order to be able to pull this the little cover out okay so if we break this little cover here Uh, I heard they going to the floor. So in there is that little clip there. You want to push down. Once it's down enough, you'll be able to open this cover. Right, that's almost out. So, 
that's that babe so you have to break it but you get a new one and then you can open that so that's where we're going to that's the hole we're going to use for refilling the fluid now i'll get the car up and we'll fit our tcm okay so i just need to remove the cover that i temporarily fit back here while the car was parked outside uh, so i'll go ahead and remove that and when we fit our uh, valve body and uh, and the transmission uh, control module okay i got the cover out um, i mean the sump um, just a word of advice here uh, actually my sump managed to collect almost another liter of oil so um, i drained that into my container over there now here i only had originally four liters and uh, now it's up to there and i lost some on the side there um, that's because i wasn't thinking that they're gonna be qu quite that much in this sump collected so within the week that this has been waiting um, it's dropped bit by bit up to a liter so i did remember that my the b class that i did had, had drained five liters so i was a bit surprised that this one only had four but um, now i can see it's got five um and actually showing five and a bit extra there to be fair um i guess that's uh, allowing for leaving this to leak for a whole week um, if you do the job straight away, probably um, you wouldn't get that much oil out. So, anyway, um, and also to be honest, I, I think I remember my B class taking 5.5 liters of oil. So, um, anyway, I'm gonna go with 5 on this one, and uh, that should uh, hopefully cover. Um, what I have there, but I'm gonna try to measure exactly the amount there. Might be, might be a little bit more than five, but luckily I have a, some extra CVT oil. Because uh, yeah, you can see I lost a little bit there and a little bit on the side there. So I always have to account for any losses like that. Um, anyway, now we can refit the whole uh, module back in there. Okay, so I might, I might not be doing much talking through the refitting. Um, I put some uh, grease around the red O-ring of the multi-plug where this plugs in, so it just goes in easily. And uh, I'm just gonna be fitting all my bolts and do the torquing. So, like I said, the, big, the bigger bolts are eight newton meters, the little ones, six newton meters. So just be careful with all of that. And uh, and also I'm gonna fit my pan here. Um, these little bolts are also eight newton meters, and also we're gonna do a zigzag kind of fitting. So if we fit number one here, one, two, um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm just gonna get on with it. There's not much technicality to this now. Um, so. Let's do it. Having said there's not much technicality to it, don't forget that that bit there that looks like a U has to hook. I don't know if it's visible, but in, in there. If it's on the side, you won't be able to engage gear. If it's on this side, again, so it has to be in the, in the center.
Okay, so just to recap, um, I changed the gasket. So new gasket, tighten the bolt here and inside and change the, uh, the drain plug here. Um, also, before plugging this in, make sure your uh, battery is disconnected. Um, so now I'm just gonna double check that my battery is disconnected and uh, then I'll plug this in. So you plug that in and then you lock the little red pin there. Okay, I had to make sure my battery was disconnected because I reconnected it to move the car, um, as in to open the windows and whatnot so I can push. So it was connected, so lucky I checked. <laughs> so now that it's disconnected, I'm gonna plug this in. Right, so make sure it goes all the way in and it clicks in. Because it can be quite hard to actually get it all the way in. So now I'm pulling on it to make sure it's locked in. Then you can lock that red pin. Obviously, if you don't push it in all the way properly, the co it may not make contact and that can cause you problems. Okay, so that's in properly. All of this is done. Um, this, you can torque this to about 25 Newton meters. I'm not sure if it's more or not. I didn't really check that one, <laughs> to be fair. Um, I'll see if I check and I put it on the video. Um, so also you can clean the area around here if you see any wetness, any oil wetness around. It's better to clean it because um, when you come back to it, uh, as in after filling up some oil, after you put the oil in and you run the car and whatnot, you want to check that there's no leaks here. So that's just important thing to do. Um, so now I'm gonna lower the car and we put some oil in. Okay, I'm just trying to measure the oil here. I got four and a half here and I got 600 mils here. So that makes 5.1. However, the amount I lost there and there is probably around 200 or 300 mils because I spilled quite a bit on here and there and obviously there I've been soaking the whole thing um, not to mention uh, other bits that I may have lost so all in all I'm looking at possibly somewhere around 5.5 liters so um, I'm gonna put well definitely have 5.1 there plus what I've lost here about 200 I'll put 5.3 liters and see what happens I do remember the last time um, I put 5 liters on my B-class and uh, when I was running it I had a little bit of a strange noise um, and then I top up the extra 500 that I think I was missing uh, at the time uh, which I was missing and uh, then it was fine after that um, there hasn't been issues with that car for the past five years so all in all I think uh, it probably takes 5.5 but uh, having sort of calculated here I'm looking at around 5.3 and then we'll take it from there okay so this is the funnel I'm going to use I'm just gonna put it in the uh, in the hole there and uh, I'm gonna pour all the oil that I need so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then uh, we'll get in the car run the car and run it through the gears make sure there's nothing weird going on any weird noises okay so I'm just on the last bit of my fluid here uh, this fluid looks a little bit like this just wanted to show you that um, this CVT fluid so 
bit of a yellowish in color. Um, I'm just pouring that in there, so I don't want to have any accidents. So I'm just going to carry on fitting my last liter here. Okay, it's finished now. So now I'm going to I'm going to leave that there for now. Don't need to refit the little cap yet. Um, this is the little cap here, and that is going to be go in there to lock that in place. But we don't need to fit that yet. First, make sure um, there's no weird noises or anything like that. So I need to um, reconnect the battery. Okay, battery's there. Just temporarily. I can start the car now. And uh, obviously I I had it in neutral. So um, if you didn't have to move the car, you could have done it on park. But I had it in neutral, so I got it in neutral there. And now I'm gonna move it to park. So ideally, all we want to do now is just run it through the gears and uh, make sure we haven't got any any weird noises or any um, big bangs or anything like that. Uh, so just run it through each gear for a little bit. Um, and then you can take it for a test drive. That will be really the ultimate taste test. Take it for a test drive and um, make sure all the gears are changing smoothly. Um, in the end I put, at the moment I put 5.25 liters of oil. Um, I was gonna put 5.3 but uh, I ran out. So I'm missing the 0.5 but even so, um, I may in the end end up putting 5.5 but we'll see how it behaves obviously um, unfortunately we haven't got a dipstick for this transmission I just wonder if the uh, computer can can read the level I'll check that out in a minute because I'm gonna make sure uh, I connect uh, the computer as well in order to delete all the fault codes so we can start from zero okay so i'm gonna leave it running because the last thing i want to do underneath is check that there's no oil leaks and also obviously um tighten the negative there refit this and so that's what i'm gonna do now i'm just gonna get it up check that there's no oil leaks Okay, so just having a quick check underneath. There isn't any evident um, oil leaks down here. So it's all nice and dry. Uh, transmission is getting swarming up for sure. And uh, it's all looking good. So I'm pretty happy with this. Obviously, if you saw any 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 wetness around anywhere here, then uh, you want to sort it out because that that is gonna um, increase with time, and uh, you don't want to lose transmission fluid, basically. So at the moment, this is looking good. Uh, sometimes, obviously, it's a good idea to after you test drive the car, give that another check because um, once the oil really gets hot it's going to um, become a lot thinner and whatnot and it could start leaking um, however if it did start leaking it would be very minor so um, anyway now I'm gonna get the car down and um, clear all the phone calls okay so while we're checking the car and driving it and whatnot we can temporarily fit this 
onto the uh, filler hole there without putting the little red clip because the little clip it's going to um, I'm also not going to push that in just yet uh, the little clip is going to lock it and then you have to break it again to remove it if you need to put a little bit more oil in it so now I'm gonna go for a test drive so while this is uh, reading all the fault codes that might be stored after disconnecting the, the module the battery and whatnot um, I can't hear any weird noises and I'm just going for a little test drive I'm gonna let that do its thing while I drive the car so I need to drive it for at least uh, a few minutes until the transmission really warms up and make sure the fault is gone um, having said that the computer um, also detects the fault only only when it's generated obviously so in this case scenario the fault was not generating while the car was um, at sort of a colder temperature it's only when it was get, gets hot that the transmission it's almost it must be like a little filament metal filament inside that when it gets hot sort of um, shrinks or expands or something happens to it and it and it breaks the contact and it causes the fault um, whatever it is it's something like that right so that's still going I'm gonna go for a little drive but I'm not gonna be filming the drive so um, uh, I'm just gonna be checking for smooth changes and whatnot Okay, so this is finished doing its thing. I'm just gonna delete all the fault codes here and uh, obviously when I drive and come back um, ideally we don't want to have the fault codes that are there so I'm just gonna finish it off. on again so it's it's cleared all the fault codes here um, just gonna get the car running this is a TCM so that's the transmission control module there gonna access it see if we can see um, the temperature and stuff like that oil level check I wonder if we can check Uh, if it's actually display drive position transmission oil temperature I'll just check I don't know if it's gonna give me the um, engine oil speed um, level or what It's actually, uh, it's not really giving me a, a level here as such, so. so that's a shame. Um, nevertheless, it looks like, um, where's, um, transmission oil temperature. We saw that, well, we can look at these figures here. This is in Fahrenheit, 143 degrees. So, so far there's no issues. Nothing's come, come up here in the dash. So anyway, I'll go, I'll go for a drive, come back and uh, check for fall codes again. And hopefully, hopefully there will be nothing. Okay. Go back from my test drive. No weird messages here. 
nothing that says transmission and uh, the computer is checking for phone calls again it's just uh, just got it going um, I can see already that TCM there it's saying uh, it's, it's in the green so uh, no phone calls there um, so to be honest that uh, this type of transmission failure is a, is quite a common one um, and the solution is to send the the module um, for repair it's fairly common just um, if you're gonna do it yourself just be very methodical about it take care of things make sure you use torque settings and um, learn if i made any mistakes like for example the oil that i spilt um try not to do the same that's one of the reasons i make videos so if i make a mistake you can learn from my mistake and don't do the same thing so i lost some oil via um spilling it and then obviously i have to guess how much more or less i spilled um, however if you're really careful um, then you can measure pretty much the exact amount that you you um, drain and then fill that amount give and take 50 mils that's not gonna be an issue um, so in this case scenario I put 5.25 liters um, I would probably be happier with 5.3 or so but I ran out of oil However, there's no weird noises. Changes, changes of the gearbox transmission have been very smooth. There's no fault codes. I've been running the car for about 25 minutes already and driving it. So, um, so happy days. Um, in any case, I hope the video helps. Um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, we'll hopefully see you on the next video. So thank you for watching. That's finished now. No fault codes at all. So good news.